Hey guys, a little bit here on the Declaration of Independence. Um, we're not going to get into too much of the battles and things like that. Uh, as you know, we're just going to get up to um, the Constitution here pretty quickly. Um, the Declaration of Independence, uh, as you know, was written by perhaps one of the uh, greatest founding fathers. Uh, I guess that's all really, <laughs> I guess, someone's uh, opinion there. But we know that Thomas Jefferson was the author uh, of the Declaration of Independence. And one of the things we mentioned briefly was the document itself. Uh, it had to serve as a justification for why it is okay and proper for the colonies to break away from Britain. Now, this is important. It's very important because the justification needs to be able to confer some sort of legitimacy. And what we mean by that is if you just show up and say, hey, we want a revolution, and there's no real reason for it, uh, there's no sort of you know thought process that goes into it, uh, you know, it comes off as just, hey, we're just angry and we just want to change, and we didn't really put a whole lot of thought into it. Uh, but the document being very well thought out, uh, very eloquent, uh, is really an important thing because it's going to have to uh, really serve as the basis for convincing people why they should support the revolution. Now, as we're going to see in a second here, much of the declaration is really just the wrongs the king and parliament uh, have perpetrated on the colonies. Uh, now, of course, that's not the whole thing, but, you know, that's the the meat of it. Uh, that's saying, hey, you want some evidence? Here's the evidence. Um, and again, as we were mentioning, justification important because, you know, obviously the people who are uh, patriots or the ones that are for revolution, they're going to definitely support you. But you have to convince the neutrals, and believe it or not, even some of the loyalists, that the revolution was legitimate and necessary. And Again, if the citizens feel that the basis for the revolution is unjust, then they're going to be less likely to support uh, such an endeavor. Now, just to show you as an example, as we see here, uh, just a portion of the Declaration of Independence, this is the part where they... Um, list of all the things that the king did or that parliament did uh, that are not, you know, cool, basically, with um, the people that want the revolution. As you can see, it's all he, of course, being the king. He has forbidden. He has refused. He has called together legislative bodies in places unusual, uh, dissolved representative houses repeatedly, uh, refused for a long time, you see, all these things start with refused, dissolved, you know, refused, forbidden. And these are all restrictions. And many of these are, in fact, they all are uh, direct responses to things that had happened to the colonists in the past. And we'll go one more page and show you again. I had to shrink it up here because there's so much of it. Um, you know, these are all complaints. Look at this down here. For quartering large bodies of armed troops, we actually have an amendment that specifically talks about that. And in fact, as you guys know, that is the Third Amendment. Um, protecting them by mock trial for punishment. Cutting off trade with parts of the world. Uh, think about Navigation Acts. And look at this one. Uh, taxes on us without our consent. That was one of the main, main rallying cries. Depriving us, in many cases, of the benefits of trial by jury. This is enshrined as one of the most uh, you know, crucial parts of our democracy. And so... All of these taken together uh, really indicate uh, and show, I think, a very good reason and good justification uh, for uh, breaking away from Great Britain. And of course, as we will find out eventually, um, is this argument successful? And I think we all know that the answer is yes. All right, guys. Thank you so much.